frags just yet, but Shock finds crew, and the Earth Shatter comes in. It's massive! Paragon showing us it's his turf! White's now and a pulse pop! Red ended up getting the double kill there in the back line. Oh, oh goodness, here comes the Blizzard! Gonna look to get the insane. And then the sleep, though, and the nade in, and they don't even need a single ult here to win it other than Shatter. And Kabat taking out Sosher there from a mile away. Now Kray taking out Big Bros. That's the long one! Oh, but Paragon with another shatter! That's so three yeah, shatters! That's up getting done in the back. This may be possible! It could be! It really could be the boom! Still here. Welcome, oh, welcome to season three. Welcome to season three. Welcome, welcome to season three. 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 Welcome to season three of the Rose Cup. Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to another amazing match at. Ladies and gentlemen, Omnix and Talon supporters, welcome to the Rose League Cup season number three, week number two. We're going to be watching a game versus Dark Allegiance and Rebellion tonight. We've got ourselves a beautiful casting team. We've got myself, Warrior, and of course, the man who's wearing those camouflage trousers. It's Hidden Pants. How you doing tonight, Hidden? Hello. How are you? I am doing great, and I am excited to finally get to see some Overwatch. We apologize. We're running a little bit late tonight, but we are going to get started right here very shortly. We're going to be starting out on Li Zhang Tower, and I'm really excited to see what these teams can come up with. Of course, Dark Allegiance is going for the entire Doomfist composition in the Icon metagame with one Mercy, but we'll see how that actually plays out in this 2-2-2 two -two -two roll locked game. I mean, I enjoyed the past days of uh, Season 1 strats where it was uh, two Lucios, two Tracers, and two Winstons in every competitive game. Oh, I mean, how do you, coin flip. How do you argue with coin flip? It's it's incredible. I mean, it's just the greatest thing we've ever seen in the history of Overwatch. In fact, I am hoping that we go back to those days that 222 just goes away and we end up with multi Lucio, multi Winston comps. Of course, I'm being sarcastic because roll lock is, in my opinion, the greatest thing ever. I'm a DPS player, so God damn it. Why are there always five of us on a team? Dude, that was the best comp though. Four DPS with a ham and mercy, like that was incredible. Like for the longest time, we're like, okay, what do we do with Hammond? We just throw four DPS with him and a single healer. All right, cool, this will work. And for some reason, it did. That's what the community decided. You know, sometimes when the community decides something, that's how it's going to be played. And as we're talking about the community right now, we're going to be starting out on the night market here, waiting to get our. Some beautiful ramen and, of course, some beautiful food from one of these markets. The question is, will we get it from either of these teams? As we're going to be seeing the Dark Allegiance going in the blue and Rebellion going to be in red. And they're coming out with pretty similar compositions. Uh, actually, they're not similar at all. We're seeing a beautiful Snee one trick on the Pharah and Ozymandias in his hit scan form. Of course, moving over, going up against a McCree and a May. Both of them not running the Reaper May composition, but we'll see how this is going to turn out for them. Is this going to be starting out with a point as usual? Ozzy Man is trying to get a pick up top. The Holt Hog comes in, but they don't get a pick, and it's going to be a continuing fight as Snee picks up Malik, and that's going to start the fight and lead us into this beautiful capture, most likely for Dark Rebellion. And as Raccoon is going to be doing the wrist wiggle, bringing Snee back up to live. Immortality comes down to keep Dr. Adam alive, and that again is going to be Dark Allegiance taking the first point. With that kind of transition that the team was really trying to shoot for, the Ryan Zarya comp only works as well with the engagement as it does after the Maywall comes in. So once you have those targets pinned, you have to be sure all five targets, not including the main support, can actually push in, take out the first target they can, and keep putting the aggression on them. The moment that it's only just Ryan, they're not going to have a great time with this kind of fight. Yeah, you really got to defend yourself from this Pharah flying above your team, especially when all you have is the Reinhardt. Ozzy Man is side and pick off two people at the beginning of this fight. And Snee, of course, dropping this barrage, picking up Tash. Dr. Jam tries to get himself away, but unfortunately, he's just going to get himself killed by, well, it's going to be just a beautiful kill by a Baptiste. With that being said, the engages have been just not so tight for the side no of the attacking team trying to just get the point back from there they really want to be sure that they can target focus on just one target all five players be pushing together alongside with the auto keeping up with the heavy healing and possibly the anti-heal to prevent fuse from getting easy heals but they really need to coordinate well and play as a six-man team rather than a solo queue team 
Yeah, the hardest part I think about Rebellion's engages right now is the fact that they are really spread out. I mean, you saw them come in together on the Rhine Zarya, but they really couldn't do anything about the multiple flanks that Dark Allegiance was running. We're gonna see Dr. Ram switch over from the Mei onto a Pharaoh to try to contest in the air, but he gets himself hooked away by Fuse. And of course, we're seeing ults left and right coming down by Dark Allegiance, and they're just continuing to hold this point with little effort at all. They only have one ultimate left, but it's a very powerful one. We're going to be seeing Mercy Ult versus a Nano. No blade to come out from Rebellion. I think this round is over. What I really want to see, though, is just that high dive coordination, because the only person that helped engage with the Hammond as soon as the fight started was just the Doomfist. The Winston was still waiting in the back corner. We see a Nano come out onto the Winston to jump into the back line. He does pick up Ozymantis in the back line, but the rest of his team is falling, unfortunately. That's one of the issues with running the dive comp is that you go in to try to take someone out on a flank, but you're leaving your back line completely exposed to the enemy team. And without heroes like Brig or someone to protect, you just have a little bit, you know, too much to handle on the back line. I, what, I, what do you want to see hidden from Rebellion to switch this up to try to have a little bit more brawl comp and a little bit more presence on the point. No, they don't need to go Brawl Comp. All they realistically need to do is just have that tight aggression. They want to be sure that they're coordinating as a six-man team rather than as a solo queue team. And they, what they really want to do is they want to mirror the Bunker Comp. If they can get the picks before they can have Snee or Dr. Adam or Fuse can be able to get their halt hooks, you can easily keep picking up these fights. Snee is putting in a high amount of aggression, but a good hit scan player can keep him in check very quickly, and they will be able to establish point faster. You know, Camel Pants, the biggest thing I see is they have no one really that can contest Snee in the air right now. Dr. Ram is going to be trying to do that with their own Pharah Mercy, especially on Garden, but, you know, being a one-trick, I think you're going to be pretty well versed in fighting against other Pharahs. So we'll just have to see how that kind of plays out for them. As this first engage is going to be coming down, Fivix going to be taking off the big pick here on the Mercy. That means no res available for Dark Rebellion. Dr. Adam combos back with a kill onto the Hammond of Trash. Fivix gets another one on the scene, so Pharah Mercy now taken out, which gives Dr. Ram free reign on the point. It's going to be a lot of pressure and a little bit of brawling. There we go. There was a lot of picks coming out from the side of Fivix against Snee and Raccoon. But after they were able to keep that point contestion, they're still able to come back in and possibly being able to recover this fight. You know, it's a little bit of uh, upset here as it's going to be Dark Allegiance that comes in in the end. Even though they were down two, they were down their Pharah Mercy. They were able to pick off Tash, who was playing the Hammond. And they just were able to just stall out on the comp and stay alive with only that Baptiste. I mean, immortality is such a big game changer, and you really have to be coordinated to take down that lamp to make anything happen. Snee up in the air right now, just doing a little bit of poke damage on that side. Dr. Ram's going to be jumping up to protect him, but he doesn't have his mercy until right about now. No air shots and going either way right now. Just a little bit of a battle in the air. In the meantime, we see Fivix take out... Fuse, who's playing on the hog, but of course, Raccoon was there to res. Raccoon caught outside, unfortunately gets taken down, but it's traded back by Ozymantis on the Tracer, who switches to make things happen here. We're going to be still seeing this brawl on the point. Fuse coming in with a whole hog, being able to take down uh, Dr. Ram. And then, of course, we see a bunch of ults coming in from Rebellion. It's going to be, uh, excuse me, it's going to be, of course, the Hammond Mines and the Slam Jam. Thank you, ma'am, from the Doomfist. And it looks like they're going to be able to take this point. All I was saying is that they don't really need the second healer just as much because Baptiste can be able to supplement all that healing that the Orisa and Hog need for it. The main thing that they need for their off support is just to be providing that extra damage for Snee. If Snee can just keep being able to get those support picks and possibly just put all of his pressure into Fivix, they're going to have a much better in time with these gauges. Hog Orisa was doing incredibly well, but they really need to be sure their DPS are coordinating in these fights. Ooh, we're trying to see Ozzy Amandis go for that sneaky flank there, unfortunately, but he gets knocked back and is forced to use his re all the way back. And then of course we see a beautiful boop by Dr. Ram to pop out Fuse. So now it's a four on, excuse me, a five on six fight here. And I really think Dark Legion shouldn't be going in and, if, and going and trying to fight this. Of course, we see ZQ take, get taken out by Fivix with a beautiful pick on the right side. Immortality going down, but unfortunately with that Doomfist uppercut, you just get knocked right out of it and you're pulled. We see a nice hook from Fuse to counter back with the help of Dr. Adam's whole hog. And now it's still a 5v6. Unfortunately, it looks like it's just going to be Dark Allegiance trickling in right now, and they really need to fall back, regroup, and not get picked off and staggered. 
What really they really want to do is just actually have CD engaging in the fights. They're he's spending way too much time trying to get these air shots onto Farah when they're both just sitting there taking just as much damage as what's happening in the initial fight. They really want to be sure that they're getting on the backline supports. They're getting really stopping the, the tanks that are just swinging around on the point, but above everything, just not trying to engage these Farah 2v2s. You know, it's really actually incredible right now that Dark Allegiance is winning this battle. It's only a three on one at this point in the battle. We're going to see Dr. Ram try to get himself back into the fight here and try to make some... Of course, going to continue to try to stall this to 99 so that they only have to win one fight. And Dr. Yam is successfully doing that with the help of his ball. We'll see if they're going to be able to get all the way to 99. I think it's very logical. The question is, they're going to have to know when to back out and not use ults or not listen to me whatsoever. Use the ults as the mines go down. They get a pick and of course, Tash gets slept. But it's going to be a win here for Rebellion. Bring it back now, one to one. It's going to be decided on the next map on Li Zhang Tower. What they really want to do, especially now with it coming up on Mission Control, Snee has to be 100% sure that they're not focusing on that far as much in this next upcoming battle. They really want to be sure to be getting those backline picks on the supports, adding that kind of oppression onto the tanks and keeping Fixix in his place with him not being as an aggressive Doomfist as we just last saw in the gardens. So, you know, this is a map that we don't necessarily traditionally see Farah play on. Now, of course, you telling me that Snee is a one trick, we see him on the Farah. The question is, is Dr. Ram going to try to contest that as well, or are they going to switch? And it looks like they do switch over to the May McCree, which is a little bit of a closer combo, a little bit more, you know, uh, seen on this map uh, here in the control center. I'm actually surprised that we don't see a junk rat here. A little bit of that extra damage helps a lot. Though what does concern me is the fact that they are still running that McCree, or excuse me, that Reinhardt Zarya combination, which although it is brawly and you can walk through that bunker comp, it really kind of prevents you from getting some picks here. Of course, Vivix doing a lot of work here, taking down both Snee and Raccoon in the air, and then of course getting a flashbang kill onto Ozymandias as they just roll right through Dark Allegiance. So, of course, all of my analysis was completely wrong, and I'll leave that to you. So the biggest problem that we just had here is the original problem of what we were seeing from the attacking team with Ryan Zarya is that they weren't coordinating that five man push into pushing him. Right now they coordinated the May wall, they pinpointed where the Orisa was, and they really used the outside ability just to get those outside boops while the McCree just went to their back line and was just able to flash fan the hammer to get those easy picks. Snee coming in, trying to come around to get that pick off from behind. He is going to be successful in flanking them as we see a shot come down, but it is and immortality keeps the team alive. We're going to see drop down his window of pain as we like to it known to try to get some damage down, but the Maywall successfully goes up to block it, and it looks like Rebellion is going to successfully hold them off for now, but a Raccoon, it might change that around with a Rez on the Fuse. Fivix in the meanwhile, picking off two more people with the help of his Zarya getting bubbled, but Zarya does fall after being 100 charged, so now this is a battle that's another stall comp. High Nude coming in, being blocked by that beautiful Reinhardt shield as it just gets blocked, but no one falls to it, and it is going to be turned over by the Dark Allegiance for the first time. 52 to 4% and counting. Very nice. Just a little bit of a stagger there just to help with the team just establish another 10 seconds of point control. But like I was saying previously, once they had the halt hooks ready to go, they were not playing around the Maywall, and they're just playing to their best ability, which is just these kind of just easy combos to pull off. C is able to provide all that damage and easily get these backline picks, just like what we just saw against the May. You know, not staggering and not dying is really the name of the game here, Hidden Pants, as we're going to be seeing this engage start off. Window of Pain coming down again. Sound Barrier is going to be dropped to try to protect the team as Whole Hog and Deadeye High Noon coming in from the side of Dark Allegiance, just trying to zone a up blizzard coming down not capturing anyone here but we see a charge coming in across on the fuse that brutality keeps fuse alive there and no one is focusing that lantern whatsoever it finally goes down by the moira you don't really want to see your supports killing but the fight is slowly going in favor of rebellion as they are able to sustain damage through it after raccoon pops valkyrie trying to keep steel alive but he himself is going to go down to fivix and fall the sword is going to happen here as we see a very late coalescence. Not sure why that was popped, but you know, I guess she just wanted to secure the point with authority. Oh, uh, right? <laughs> That's not your spawn. Oh, no. 
Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. The throws are real, Hidden Pants. The throws are real. Let's see how this engage works for them. They are now down two essential players for this next upcoming fight. Three. Oh. Ozymandias checks the corner properly, just like a CSGO match, and flashbangs it, then takes out with a beautiful headshot down to Garitar. They do successfully capture it back, and they're going to quickly just take the lead here. Remember, this is the last point of the first map here in Lijang Tower, so we'll see how this is going to go. I think they're only going to have time for one more fight hit. I think with that being said, though, both teams do have two incredibly strong ultimates to be using for this next upcoming fight. And we really have to see, though, how well they're able to keep this kind of aggression up, and they really need to be sure that they're getting those picks where they need them. Dark Allegiance right just now, uses them better that time. Window of Pain with the High Noon plus the, the uh, rockets from above, the barrage, it just kind of secured it. Dark Legion is going to be taking the first map. The, the number one issue that really did not change the tide of how this fight was going to be done, they were engaging more with the McCurry ultimate. They really need to be sure that the Zarya ultimate was the first one to come out. Getting that easy gathering where the Reinhardt can easily just build charge, where they can keep pushing forward and keep getting all those picks where everybody's in the Graviton, and then they can completely avoid where Snee and Baptiste were just doing a combo with each other. With that being said, there were a lot of held ultimates that were just really, really mismanaged based on the timing of when those ultimates need to be used. If they want to change anything on how these fights are going to be changed, they really want to be sure that they can change those tanks ultimates to be the ones to engage first, rather than the DPS ultimates just sitting there behind Rhine Shield. Yeah, I think switching maybe to a little bit more of a bunker comp, enabling them to kind of get those picks and really set up and then move in is going to help them out a little bit. I mean, you've got a Pharah that's running around basically for free, you know, uh, yes, that point is not made for Pharah, so we did see him get picked a lot. Um, but on the other maps where where there's so much verticality, Snee was just able to roam the map completely for free. Uh, you know, Rebellion, I think, got a lucky good couple of fights on Garden, which enabled them to even move into the next uh, phase there on Control Tower. But unfortunately, it it didn't go their way in the end. And I think it just had to do, like you said, with a little bit of ult economy and the lack of you know, aggressiveness uh, to really get those picks and move on. We are going to be moving on to Assault Escort here. I believe we're going to be moving on to King's Row, of course, the Dust 2 of Overwatch. And for those of you not familiar with Dust 2, that's the most popular map in, in Counter-Strike. So what do you think we're going to see here? Tonight, I really think we're going to be sticking more with just the traditional bunker comp. With the release of Sigma not being available for this particular season of Rose League, right now the two most popular comps is definitely Sigma Zarya, but Bunker Comp will always have a very solid place in the Overwatch community right now, just because of how simple you can coordinate a lot of the drills and mechanics that you can implement, especially on attack and defense. The biggest one being is just Halt Hook. You know, Halt Hook is essentially Hook 1.0. Uh, That's it's, all it is. it's easy mode. It's the pulled pork. I mean, it, when you go to a barbecue joint, right, you don't ask for, you know, mac and cheese. You ask for the pulled pork sandwich and you slather that barbecue sauce on it at all times. And I mean, when you do that in Overwatch, it's an Orisa hog combination. Halt, hook, dead hero. You know, the only thing that really counters that that we've been seeing a lot of in pro level play is, of course, the May Reaper. And Reaper, not even so much. It's more the May. You put the wall up, you save your teammate, or you put the wall up after you secure the the, the hook in to guarantee yourself a, a kill. So I'm more interested to see if we're going to be seeing any of what we believe is really OP in the comp competitive scene right now, which is double barrier and a nice Symmetra. I know it's blasphemous to say her name in pro level play and any tournaments because, you know, Symmetra is is apparently the voodoo monster, but you know, I would love to see a Symmetra come out, especially on these assault maps or two CP maps, because I think she's extremely powerful right now, especially against barriers. Well, you know why she's not extremely like just popular, right? They fixed a very long bug issue that just went with any sort of laser tracking just Okay, the two biggest ones were Zarya and Symmetra. With yes. that, the clipping actually got fixed, and the damage output that Zarya and Symmetra can output now 
is doubled because it's actually landing the hits. It was all because of a bug that made them the two most powerful people in the entire game right now because of how much damage is actually being pushed out rather than how much damage is being clipped away for how much is actually happening. She's still extremely powerful against barriers, but we're not going to see that going on right now. Seeing the dive composition coming out from Rebellion, the int comp with 5x onto the Doomfist coming around the backside, trying to push Ozymandias with the help of Tash on the ball. They're definitely going to be wary of that Widow. They want to keep her moving without lines of sight. Of course, they are going to be running the Pharah comp as well as he is in the air trying to battle Dr. Ram, but also ignoring the rest of the team as he's going to be dropping into that whole hog ante going out on a fuse. I don't know if he's going to be able to walk. And of course he doesn't because, well, he walks right out of the immortality as he's being pushed. Joe Monster is going to be getting that fuse back up and into the fight. Ozzy Man is getting a pick onto Dr. Ram and Cretan trying his best to secure any kills as he can. It's going to be Dark Allegiance pushing back now that dive that was almost fatal with a pick off on the fuse. Of course, the Mercy bringing him back helps him out. One very crucial tip, especially for any ranks that are really wanting to be sure to stop any sort of Mercy that's going to be trying to to pull the things that they're pulling. Always camp the dead body. If the Mercy camp just it. sees an opportunity to go in and res it, she is. The I only person that was able to stop her was fix it, but he didn't have enough DPS in order to secure the kill. That meant that Fuse just essentially got a 600 health heal and was brought back from the dead. Fix is gonna be starting this out by getting a pick onto Ozzy Mantis. Fuse then getting the pick. So it's a 5v5 situation here. Ozzy Mantis not able to do any countering to Dr. Ram as he's up in the air, but he's still falling back by Hotel by his team. He's not being the aggressive fire that we really need him to be to push the team back. They're going to pop out Immortality and, of course, that window of pain to try to push back Rebellion and prevent them and scare them and zone them away. We're going to be seeing that halt come through. Doesn't really get anyone, and will the team dive in through the Hotel? Are they going to be going around and up top? It is going to be up top. Tash coming in, trying to get some damage. Fivik diving in, but it's going to be Snee that picks off Malik and Dr. Ram answering back with that barrage, getting a pick onto Ozymandias, but of course, we see that Rez come back in. No one pitched that tent. No one was able to camp that and prevent that from happening. Nano's coming in, and this fight is just a complete brawl. Ultimate's being used back and forth, but I think Snee is getting the better of them right now with that barrage, picking up two kills. With that being said, we've already made the notion to this. You want to be sure you camp the bodies. Just having a free res like that is just detrimental, especially during these upcoming fights. You don't know if that person has the ultimate charge ready to go. You don't know if they're going to use it immediately as soon as they ult. Look, this is what I want. Respawn. This, this is what I want, Hidden. I want the chat, our Twitch chat, to give out those campfire emotes. I want to see so much camping that everyone knows you need to camp that body. Just spam that chat with those tents and those campfires. This fight's going to be starting out with a terrible pick for Rebellion. It's going to be their monkey dropping down. Dr. Em tries to answer back with a pick, but Ozymandias picks off Fivix, who does switch over off of the Doomfist over on to the Widow to try to answer back, and he falls short. Ozymandias, of course, getting another pick as that Pharah battle was coming to an end anyway as Snee got one hit and was looking for the second without the Mercy. Having a lack of hit scan and them not having the follow-up of just coordinating no one on hide. one single target to take them out of the fights has been really detrimental to the attacking team right now. We really want to be sure that we're figuring just where these teams are going to be playing the most, where their best strengths are, and they're not utilizing what they're trying to pull with these kind of comps. They're just going for these backline picks and try and get these cheesy, cheesy, just out of the way guys. Trying to get Ozzy Mantis out is not the best idea. If you're going to just push that much, then you might as well push for Steam. We're going to be watching this window of pain in the back by Dark Allegiance ZQ holding his team is kind of slowly falling here. Can he keep creating up and alive? We see Dr. Ram coming in with that barrage, picking up two, but getting taken down by the Baptiste. It's just Baptiste on point with his Pharah, and it's going to be 5X who comes in to clean that up. Mines go down on the point, and I think Rebellion finally found a way to crack into this as we're going to see a beautiful Joe Meister coming in to try to res someone, but they finally realized that they got to camp the body, Hayden. They finally realized they have to camp the body. That's all it is. If you're really wanting to try and go for these cheesy backline picks and they're really out of position, you want to be sure that you camp that body so you can get the mercy pick with it as well. So would you expect now that they switch off this dive comp to go with a little bit more bunker comp? I mean, they have to stay on the payload. They have to keep it pushing. It looks like Garatar is going to be staying on the Winston. I would expect wholeheartedly to see a whole hog combination. 
you know, a, a Arisa Hog combination coming in here. I really want to see just the coordination for the dive. The dive itself isn't that bad, it's just the execution on how they need to perform their roles. When Hammond comes in to slam a certain target, there really needs to be just that follow-up of the Fair Emergency focusing on the Hammond target, the Winston coming in with the residual damage of hitting three multiple targets, and just not going in one like by this, one. one. One at a time getting one picked One at off. a time, one at a time. Here's and the problem just... with running dive through a choke, right? You can't get any choke presen presence. Look at how far up Dark Allegiance is right now. They're they are sitting in this choke. They can sit in this point. They can bunker in and play whatever they need to. We need to see Rebellion switch over and take that point presence back. They need to sit on that cart and get themselves a way in. Right now, they're trying to flank around the side, but, but look, Dark Allegiance is all about it. They're checking their corners. They're checking their flanks. They're waiting for it. They're putting the pressure on them. They're taking the aggressiveness in this fight. With everything that we've just been discussing for this, we really want to be sure that we're seeing both of the main tanks just pushing in and just immediately getting these picks and just coordinating with each other. If they're not, then there really needs to just be a better coordination between the Ryan Zari if they're going to have any use in going to play with this kind of tank to run. We see Ball dive in and the Winston jump in the back line, and of course, then 5X gets two with this high noon in the top, but unfortunately, they're not able to make that progress with it. And why is that? Well, it's because they're not running bunker and they're all over the place. They're being different. I want to hear them call it out. Look at this. Ozzy Mandis picks off two more in the back line. Finally, we see Tash answer back and Dr. Ram answer. But look at this. Joe Monster just in the middle of the point. No pressure. No body. No camping. There is no one sitting there. And it's going to be a res back on. Finally, we see Rebellion take a little bit of an aggressive stance here now that they basically wiped the team. But the question is... Is Fuse going to get a sneaky hook here, and are they going to be able to hold this point? Dark Allegiance is setting up for a great hold before this point caps. I got to give Fuse a lot of props. He is walking and crouching to be sure that he is not being detected. That is absolutely fantastic that these players are actually utilizing the crouch ability that they've silenced their footsteps. I mean, if this was Counter-Strike, I'd definitely say you got to walk to be silent, but in this game, you have to do the tactical crouch, and that is, of course, tactical crouching on the floor. Look at the aggressiveness that Stee is making right there, getting himself nano-boosted, dropping the barrage onto tanks. This is going to be a hold at point two for Dark Allegiance. We definitely saw a lot better coordination coming out into the second point, but we really want to be sure, though, that those targets that they're jumping onto are the correct targets. Jumping on the Orisa Hog right before they halt hook probably not the best idea is being a squishy 400 health or 425 health 75 armor dive tank that excels way better at doing 1v1s rather than jumping into heavily fortified tanks so what Especially i'm hearing from you hidden is we need to do a little bit more ability tracking right we need to know oh man they just used hog they uh they just used halt they just used hook Right, Sleep Dart is baited out. Immortality is gone. Now we can dive. Now we can secure that kill. We need to get those things out of the way and try be tracking those abilities to make sure that we can dive in and get that damage and get that worthwhilness out of our dive. We, we need to pay dividends on what we're trying to do here. Right? Absolutely. And so... You want to be certain that when you're engaging these fights, you're immediately recognizing the situation as a whole. What abilities can stop you from preventing the goal of what you wish to accomplish? And above everything else, just making sure that you're not going to die in the process. If you're able to complete your objective and then you die afterwards, that's okay. You still completed what your main task was. If you are Winston, you are excelling the 1v1s against a Zen or a McCree or just an Ana. You still are doing fantastic because you removed an essential core player from the roster and you're able to keep putting that kind of pressure onto the team, even after your death. I'm really glad, Hidden, that we are seeing this little bit of a change on Rebellion side on defense. They're playing directly into what was causing them issues, right? They've got the McCree. They've got a D.Va to try to contest Snee in the air as well as playing Bunker Comp. I think they're getting pushed a little bit too far now. Uh, they needed to hold their ground a little bit better and get in their face, but they're still doing a decent job of not pre preventing any damage and any ticks down. Fivik's going to be getting the first pick on the Cree. Nazi Man is answering it back, and of course, 
Can't camp the body. Why not? You're sitting on the point right there with him. You should have killed that Mercy a hundred times over. Dr. Ram is going to get himself slept while jumping into the air by ZQ with a beautiful sleep dart. Fuse coming in on the Zarya just doing tons of damage here with that 100% charge being Cretan. Showing them how to use McCree properly, excuse me, Reinhardt properly as they take this first point. So to be fair, the Reinhardt I did try and get the Mercy mind. whenever she was resing. But the number one thing that really helped him was that little bit of knockback to the right allowed him to immediately grab her and get the pin to get the immediate kill onto the Mercy and then just immediately stall out the Baptiste just solo, just trying to solo heal the two tanks that were just too focused on the Reinhardt while the rest of the team was able to follow up on the back line, push in as a four and help the Reinhardt later as the fight continued. Look at the forward aggressiveness that Dark Allegiance is taking right now, right? You're not running a dive comp, but you're taking that forward stance. You are getting people picked off as they're setting up. 5X was away from his team completely, not anywhere near that win box, that golden, beautiful honey that I want to get to and get this payload delivered to to take this win. Of course, Trash getting a pick onto Azimandis as he's trying to get around the corner to try for a flank, but Sneak counters back with Dr. Ram, and they are just all over the place. Asleep coming down on Tash, he does get bubbled, but he is alone and getting himself charged, anti and killed. This is not looking good for Rebellion right now. I will have to say, one thing that really did very well on C's part was he was able to knock away the Mercy when she was getting that corner res, and he was able to immediately stop that res in the progress while the Reinhardt was engaging onto the point. I don't know if Rebellion's going to even be able to get out here. They pull out the ball to try to stall a little bit, but he is going to get himself just deleted, absolutely, as this ball and this honeypot gets brought right to that point number two win box potential with a pretty substantially easy win, or at least easy looking win from Dark Allegiance. We really want to be sure that when you're coordinating as a team, you're focusing on where the core abilities are going to be used, what is the things that are going to prevent the objectives actually being completed, and above everything else, just making sure that you're following up with the rest of the team and you're coordinating those heavy dives. If you wish to run a dive comp, that's the beauty of Overwatch. You can run multiple different kinds of metas just to see what fits and what does well. Yeah, and, and what's not working well, I'd love to see them change it up, right? Obviously, Dive is not working well against Dark Allegiance. Let's switch it up. Let's get ourselves, you know, a Bunker Comp. Let's get ourselves uh, a Brawl, a Reaper May whole hook comp. Like, let's see it happen. Let's see you change it up. Let's see what... Maybe you're not that practiced on it, but, you know, obviously what you are practiced on isn't working, so you need to switch it up. But in the meantime, we do want to give a shout-out to Natter. Each division winner will receive a free two-hour coaching session with him. So Natter provides great educational content for Overwatch, including community VOD reviews and live coaching. His Twitch is twitch.tv slash NatterOW. That's N-A-T-T-E-R-O-W and can be found in the Rose Cup Discord in the partner section. So if you're in the Discord, go ahead and check him out and give him a shout out and say thank you for everything like that. We'll be seeing if his coaching style in the next one will, of course, maybe make your team better. Never know. Never know, Hidden. We got to see, though. I definitely have faith, and I definitely would love to see these teams do it at the best of their abilities. So the next map is going to be a assault map. It's either going to be Paris or Hanamura. Of course, uh, most teams are not going to pick ha Paris because, let's be honest, it's the worst map, in my opinion. What do you think? I mean, if you enjoy two CP maps where all the game really boils down to is that you jump through one tight objective point, I really got to say you would be a great map designer for Overwatch because that is what we see within two CP games. And this is what that's every two CP map, right? <laughs> very last or very first point. It just depends. Who knows? It's however they're feeling that day. And it's just, well... Alrighty then, we're just gonna do this, we're gonna make it look real nice and pretty, and then we're gonna make it look really, really complicated, but it's actually just go through one little tight chokehold. Go through one chokehold that, in the case of Paris, can be held very easily with a beautiful bunker comp with a Bastion and a May. I mean, you put that wall up, what do you do, right? You kinda gotta bring the Sombra out to try to counter that, or at least maybe get a Sim to do the Sim teleport strat across. So, I I'm going with the Sim, man. I, I, think, I think that's what Rebellion needs to bust this wall that has been Dark Allegiance that are now up 2-0 
in this best of five. I really want to see though. Or first of three. Yeah, best of five. It's best of three, but we are going to be playing up to that fourth map. We are going to be doing similarly Overwatch style. Rules. Yeah, of course. Oh, from, wait, is this over? Ooh, Overwatch League style? No, it's just the typical style of how they wish to do it. Um, but with that being said, though, I definitely would love to see a little bit of variety coming out from Dr. Adam. The Dr. Adam Arissa whole hog is looking very, very strong, but for the sake of what was going on for that previous fight, Creighton was actually doing a tremendous job onto Reinhardt, and I can see why they wanted to make that little switch for just King's Row. Reinhardt Zarya excels extremely well after the first point. First point's a bit tougher to push through, and you can't really push in against a hog Arissa. But the absolute best thing you can do is to keep pushing down tight objective holds with that humongous Rhine shield, with that amazing output of Zarya damage, and also utilizing the corners to get those absolutely beautiful but cheeky shots of the Zarya Graviton. So it looks like we are going to see Hanamura. So this is a, uh, like you said, it's getting through that 2CP. Do you think we're going to see bunker comps on either side? I mean, Typically, we see a lot of Ray, uh, May Reaper at the pro level uh, to hold here. Do you, what do you think, Hidden? We're going straight into this. With this, I really want to definitely see just how well we're going to be seeing that defensive chokehold. Like I said, Bunker Comp can work well on both attack and defense, and Bunker Comp works extremely well on two CP maps because it excels at one thing, locking down one tight objective hold and just excelling at it. And what is two CP? It's a tight choke. Tight objective hold with a tight stand -up. objective holds. That's it. That's, That's all. That's the name of my next band. Tight, tight objective up. holds. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, but with that being said, I really wanted to see how well we're going to be seeing from the attacking team. Just how well they're going to be able to coordinate their own Arissa Hog, or if they've gotten everything out of the way and they're able to clear up what the, what was troubling them for the Ready past two maps. Back. Bringing back the dive comp, really focusing hard with the Doomfist, Hammond, Winston, and just excelling on just single point dives and taking out the backline one by one while being able to go in and stopping the Arisa Hall hooks. Well, for those of you just joining us, this is, of course, the Rose Cup Season 3, Week Number 2 match between Dark and uh, Rebellion. Dark Allegiance is going to be in the blue. Rebellion is going to be red. And Dark Allegiance right now is up 2 to nothing, getting a win on Li Zhang Tower and a dominant win on King's Row. They are going to be starting out on the defense here on Hanamura and they are setting up a beautiful whole hog combination and we get to see my second favorite hero in all of Overwatch. It's Ash. I'm excited for this. Light him on fire and get the seventh player on the field. It's Bob. Oh man. Start this off with a whole hook combination onto Tash trying to get around the back line. Again, Rebellion doing what they've been doing all two maps and that's trying to run this dive and uncoordinated at that, and unfortunately, they're failing at it. Ooh, this is not looking too hot for him. Fix it just staying in the back and just not being able to engage on him because it, Tash just gets halt hooked and just gets destroyed. And with this, the staggering is just coming out. Now with the staggering is now coming the beautiful changes that we need oh, to see. We've been waiting for it, and I'm so happy, but Tash is going out alone by himself trying to take some room. The rest of his team is still sitting in spawn. He is feeding basically ult charge to the enemy team right now. He almost got killed. Look at him. He had sliver. Luckily, he gets away and doesn't stagger, but still, you got to be communicating with your team and knowing when everyone is going to be pushing up with you. With this, though, I really wanted to see how much pressure the diva can absorb with this kind of next level of changes. Because with this kind of halt hook combo, I really want to be sure that the diva can actually put that kind of pressure on the scene. That damage just gets a little bit subsided, and we're able to just keep seeing more beautiful plays. But right now, this looks like it's just becoming Stagger City. We're just really you know, want to be sure that they can just all die together and then just respawn as a six. Right now, it's been a minute 30, and they still haven't even got through the front door. Damage boosted Snee has been just building that ult charge. He is preventing ult charge from Ozymandias and getting that Bob, but you know, it doesn't look like they really need it. We see Dr. 
Ram switch over onto the uh, Hanzo, trying to get himself a pick, and he's going off by himself onto the right side. Going to try to get up top into that top window and try to put some pressure to prevent people from getting their 5x. He's going to get a pick onto Raccoon. That means no res available. Window of Pain dropping down in Immortality on both sides. But look at this. Sneak comes back and answers back with that barrage through the Window of Pain, picking up two with that splash damage. Like I was saying, it's immediately them not trying to coordinate on where they're trying to go, but how they're going to push through this tight objective. They really want to be sure that they're changing the game now. They have the comp to do it, but number one thing they really want to be pushing for is how are they going to get through that Arisa hog combo. They really need to wait out the abilities and just really make sure they're managing when those abilities are in use. So we're going to have... Valkyrie, Bob, and Bongo ready for the next push here up against a Nano Boost and a McCree all Deadeye. But Tash is going to get himself picked off and then 5x goes down as well. This is complete panic going on right now for Rebellion. What do they need to do to switch this up? They need to stop that halt combination from happening. But I mean, Dr. Adam and Fuse are just hitting every hook. Right, because they have gotten in and they have just really shown what their bread and butter is. Snee is providing a high output of damage that is just corralling the team into equally tight areas, while Dr. Adam is just getting in and getting those halts, and the Fuse is just coming in and just following up with that hook and immediately putting pressure onto it. We really want to be sure that whenever we're seeing these kind of engages coming out from the enemy team. There we go! We saw the first halt hook coming up from the defending side. But the immortality stops it and breaks it down. We're going to be seeing those dragons coming through the main side. Finally getting a pick on the fuse window of pain coming down from ZQ. They're going to be able to res that too because... There's no shield damage, no shield pressure on the side of Rebellion as Gazitar is going to be getting himself a whole hog, but it's going to be a dead eye from Fivik that finally turns this tide of battle in their favor. They're finally going to get through the choke. Five seconds left, got to get on the point, and they finally do. Dr. Adam is all alone in that choke point. Going to try to prevent the rest of his, their team from getting their immortality, and now it's just a battle of Tash versus Dr. Adam. He does fall in a smart little play to try to stall some time. Fuse is going to try to come back and stagger because we all know that now the rules on 2CP is if you die quickly, you get that three-second spawn. Max is going to be jumping off the edge here. ZQ out a little bit. Is he going to be able to die in time? And Snee also doing the same thing. With that being said, we're now seeing these engages doing a lot, lot better because they're now immediately jumping in and they're doing the halt hooks on their own terms. They're getting these picks, they're getting the pulls, and they're really pushing forward into making this objective theirs. We really want to keep seeing that from this defending side so that way it's not just a straightforward, just complete slaughter. Ozymandias switches off of that Ash onto the Widow, try to put some pressure down. Tash is going to get up onto the Orisa. They're not going to be able to res that down and unfortunately raccoon is in the air they're finally camping that body trying to get a pick on a fivix and it's gonna be done with the help of fuse they're sprawling on the point now's the time for rebellion to reset and get out but it's going to be raccoon rezzing in the middle going for an aggressive res they're getting himself picked off malik on the point here trying to get something done but he's all alone tears coming on with the immortality of his own what is going on hidden why haven't we reset and restarted this push we really have to see how well that fight really was engaged. He came in with this kind of boot that just separated the whole team. With that being said, Malik decided to go in and push in on his own. While we're still seeing Arissa, Bap, and Hog just still trying to coordinate with each other to make this push even work. But even at that point, it's still just a 3v6. You just want to be sure at that point you're separating over to the right, waiting out for the rest of the team and to push up and then being able to go. Or you just suicide just so that way you can all respawn a 6 and then take down the front door. Man. Garitar gets an opening pick onto Sneed. They're not going to let that res go off because he's out there. And they get a pick on the Raccoon as well. Now's the down and close. And the ult advantage is in their favor. The question is, will they be able to get through? They walk through Window of Pain with Immortality down. High Noon coming in from Main, but he gets nothing out of that. Unfortunately, Immortality from ZQ keeping his team alive. And the whole hog being able to take out that Nano Boosted Orisa on Tash. And it is going to be another hold here from Dark Allegiance. With how forward some of these Baptiste ultimates have become coming, we really need to be sure that when we're seeing Tears putting out his ultimate, he's putting it right in front of where the Orisa needs to be putting up her next shield so that way they can easily establish another 900 health shield, still keep pushing forward with the amplification, and still have that kind of pressure onto the point. 
throwing it onto the middle of the point just is a dead ultimate. It is dead in the water. It's dead on arrival. You can't do anything with that. With that, you really want to be sure that you're saving those ultimates and utilizing them to the best of your ability because without that ultimate, you're essentially losing a huge DPS increase for your team. Ooh, Snee trying for a sneaky back barrage in the middle of them. Ozzy Man is <coughs> there to open this up. And Raccoon going in, rezzing there. Oh my god, I cannot believe they let him rest. Snee, the dragon comes through as well, and it doesn't hit him. It's going to be a hold on the second point here for Dark Allegiance, not even giving up a single tick on point number two. Switching sides. So now that they're both playing bunker comps, we are now definitely showing what needs to happen during those Initiating bunker comp match. battles. The number one thing that you really, really want to do, and this is the whole point of bunker comp, is that whoever shield drops first is the losing side. If immediately your shield is nowhere to be seen and their shield is still prominently in charge and they're pushing forward onto you, you have to keep backing up in order to keep that pressure the same. But if your team can keep putting out that much pressure against them, they can't establish that shield pressure and keep pushing it on your shield. Bunker comp is just a game of shields. And I mean, with that's Road why Arisa, you really want to be certain that you are putting out as much pressure as you can and your DPS can supply Ready just as much battle. with that team. But that's right why now, the Reaper May comp is so strong right now at the pro level, because as soon as that shield breaks, you have an extra one on top of what you already have with that ice block. You can secure kills with it. You can save your team with it, and you can basically block Everyone a choke. It's I really, really, really strong. Of course, we're going to be seeing Dark Allegiance right now on attack. Are they going to run this May Sim, or are they just doing the caster troll? I think what we're really going to be seeing here is probably the most classic version of how you want to be playing this upcoming battle. With this, you want to just immediately hop into point, establish your presence onto the point, and then have the battle be on your terms rather than them trying to set up back onto the point and pushing in. For right now, we're already seeing on the defending team them trying to set up on the point. They already have a setup. They can't do anything with that. Now with this, they're going to push in, immediately get the TP up and go straight to the point. This is the double barrier sim teleport that's strong, but unfortunately Garatar takes down Snee at the beginning of this, and then Tash does kill the lantern and put one down for his team of his own. So now it's just a brawl on the point, but look at how thick Ozymandias' beam is. A great anti-nade coming in from Malik, but he melts himself. Ozymandias doing so much damage right now, 190 DPS per tick of that beam right now until the changes come in. Notice how this team comp is just surrounded around protecting one single target and then using the multiple shields just to prevent all that front up, up front damage from coming in. You're essentially replacing the May walls with what Fuse can be providing because he's just sitting there after the Arisa shield goes down to provide that time and cooldown for him to hold his shield up and keep that 2000 health shield from just establishing that time while Ozzy can immediately just keep charging up his beam. They need to get one tick now. They're already halfway there because of that. Seeing a dive comp come out to try to defend against this from Rebellion, but a beautiful May wall forcing everyone to come down. And by May, I mean, of course, Sim forcing them to come down into the back line through that window of pain. Ozymandias burning through people. Raccoon on the reworked Brigitte trying to get some stuns here, popping that rally. And it looks like they are going to be successful here with that immortality. They're doing a really good job. Dr. Adam just sitting on that point in the back, protecting that teleporter so everyone can get back really quickly. And that's going to be the tick here. Closing up this map from Dark Allegiance. going to be three to zero. With that being said, though, the fourth map is still just as crucial. Getting a win on your side and having that one map up can still help with your map pool, and it will help you tremendously later on down the road whenever it comes down to, fi to finals and semis. This play of the game is going to be on Fivix getting that high noon here. Yeah. Getting down Snee and picking up two more. This is really what enabled them to win the fight, so well done, and that was definitely the play of the game as far as Rebellion was concerned. Of course... Like the chat is saying, Sim is OP. And of course, that's what I was saying before. We love to see Sim. I love me some Sim. I uh, just, I'm excited for her nerfs just because of how <laughs> strong that beam charge is. It just well, you don't like playing against her in comp? No, because most of the time it's these gimmicky comps that make it to where you have to be sure you're preparing for both sides of the coin. If you're just waiting for only 
what we were seeing from Rebellion was just them immediately setting up on the high ground and then they had no way of transitioning back onto the point. They are in a tighter situation because now there's Brick that's just going to be sitting there with the high amount of stun. We're also going to be seeing Sim just keep building up her damage with her left click. And then all the Sims are just slowing down people and just having an easier time for Sim to just land up those targets. But that's what I was also saying with the Reinhardt shield. That timing of just coordinating between those shields is plenty of time for you to ignore what the true value of that comp really is. Is just helping that Sim build up her charge and then just hold left click into infinity and beyond and just keep putting all that pressure onto the team. I mean, if you think about it, it's really just a variation of goats that they ran, right? They had the Brig, they had the Lucio, they had the Reinhardt. You have Orisa in there just to protect your teleporter, right? But then you got Sim, which is your beam, is all your it's all your damage. It's it's Zarya, right? You don't have Graviton, you don't have Bubble, but you got a giant wall you can set up on point. Just add barrier on barrier on barrier, and that was a great strategy to see them quickly take point A and then quickly get one tick is all they needed on point b but we are transitioning over now to our last map it's going to be escort on dorado another opportunity for a quick tight choke at the bridge the question is will we see it happen of course we are seeing dark allegiance remain in the blue and rebellion in the red and that means dark allegiance is going to be ending first i'm just excited because dorado is definitely too two players maps that have done extremely well with how they're going to be playing we're definitely seeing ozzy mantis just coming in and just immediately dominating the game with just widow and then of course snee just showing the world that being a feral one trick doesn't mean that you're going to be there and just only providing backline damage you're going to be up front in their face providing as much burst and also splash damage with your rockets and then have a heavy hitting ultimate just to provide every bit of tank buster that you can provide yeah, playing a ground fairy is no different than playing Junkrat, let's be honest. I mean, not the worst thing in the world, but at the same time, you also want to be sure that you're playing it to the best of what your team can be doing. Uh, yes, it's this is Overwatch after all. This is not a single-player game. You have to work with your team, have that coordination, and of course, make something happen. But like you were saying, something I want to touch on is the verticality of Dorado. This is going to play into Sneeze strong suit significantly as he can play around his team and just keep the aggressiveness forward on this cart. I don't know if Rebellion's going to have a chance here, but 5X, of course, is going to be trying on that Widow to try to prevent as he gets himself almost picked off by Ozymandias, and he's all alone. He's got to drop down to get some healing from his Mercy, but unfortunately, he can't jump over the wall, and Ozymandias, with a little help from Sneeze, cover fire, is going to be able to get that first opening pick. No res available either. I don't see how they're getting up there. With that backline Ryan pick just immediately throwing him off of high point, we really wanted to see how well the hammock can come in with the rest of the team, but we're just seeing the Winston and the rest of the team is still trying to regroup. It's just a 5v6 right now with the hammock just hanging out in the back. I mean, you want to kill this Pharah? You want to kill this Pharah? Where's your shield to give 5x the cover? He's literally out in the open. And he's going to get himself hooked right now. Tears keeping him alive in the end. Fuse unable to secure that kill with a little bit of a barrier from... Garretar as well. Fuse getting knocked over into the team. Will he be able to survive? He does get slept, but Cretan and Immortality are there to keep him alive. There's no forward damage there. Able to take him out. Ozyman is going to get pushed down by Garretar, but not before he gets a pick onto 5x. We really wanted to see just how much pressure the rest of the team could just be putting out because only Tash is jumping in on the back line. Where is the Winston? Where is going to be everyone else? The double snipers are providing all that shield break that they can, but the tanks really need to coordinate and engage with each other. Man, Fuse is hitting these hooks like he is on the butcher block looking for that meat. I don't know if that made sense. I think it made sense. It made sense in my mind. There's but there's hooks that meet hanging, you know, he he puts the... Okay, anyway, Ozymandias getting himself another pick onto 5x here. It's going to be a swap from Tears, excuse me, from Tash. Going to be going onto that ball. Actually, he's been playing ball the whole time, but he hasn't been doing much with it, which is why I didn't even realize that he was on it. He tries to go in there, but he has to back away because he's almost dead again. This is another unfortunate situation where the tanks are diving in without coordinating with the rest of their team. Right now we're just having a Winston ult just coming in and just smacking them around, but they really don't have a plan. They don't have an execution of where they want to go with it. Right now they're just letting them just go jump around and just try their best and just providing any kind of CC break. 
But with that being said, we're just seeing Snee and Ozzy just getting those backline picks against the snipers, and then Hog just getting all the hooks that he's ever wanted. You know, the dragons come out, there's no combo with it, so he uses it to try to zone. Unfortunately, he's unable to get a pick with it. We see Fuse use the whole hog and get vast majority of dividends out of that. He does pick off Garatar, and we do finally now see the bunker comp switch. We see the whole hog combination. Sneeze coming in for a sneaky barrage. I can sense it from being a Pharaoh one trick myself. He does get one on Tash, and Dr. Ram is going to take him out with, of course, well, a sonic arrow. But look at that. Immortality comes down in protection. Snee is brought back to life. You think he's dead, but he's not. He's right back in the game. And that, that hurts the morale of Rebellion. It has to. With that being said, though, we're now in the last minute. And they're now coming in with the Orisa Hog. They really want to be sure that whenever they're making these kind of changes like this, they really want to be sure that they're earlier on in the game, not this wait. And just having to sit there and now having to deal with the consequences of what this kind of stall is providing this kind of team. Look at this positioning though. We need to see Tash take a little bit more defensive position and get those hooks to pull those people off the high ground. Unfortunately, they only get one knee. Garner does take down the immortality of Ozymandias, but look, Joe Meister completely safe and able to raise his support to heal the rest of his team up. Back, huge shatter comes in, taking down Gadgetar and Hanzo in the back line, and Joe Meister going in with the DPS. He wants the nano, they don't have it, but he tries to get a kill anyway. He's going to be falling back now. Finally, we see this cart moving forward. With that, Genji. though, we definitely see, though, maybe there's something that can come up. There's a lot of ultimates coming out from the defending side, and then right now, it's definitely seeing more complimentary ults coming out from the attacking side as well. There was no communication, and you know this, because Whole Hog comes out at the same time as Dragon does. You never want out of your dragon. Why? But, you know, they're trying to use their ults to try to keep this game alive. We're going to see Snee get himself one kill onto Malik. That's a very high value. Eyes in the back alive. The team's got to stay on the point here. Are they going to be able to do it? Garatar, the only one being able to stay on the point, but he gets taken down. Tas tries to get back as he was in the back line trying to make some damage, but he doesn't. And that's going to be the end of the round here for Dark Allegiance successfully on a point one hold here right by the fountain. Not very far to go. And it's going to all come down to Rebellion's defense if they can get a map off. Oh my goodness. Let us see. I would love to just see them immediately go into Orisa Hog just to have that immediate defensive halt, essentially. Just to have them just have a safer pick and just them moving forward with it. If anything, they really want to be sure that they can take this time to reflect, they can move forward from this, they can immediately go into practice, realize what they really need to be focusing on, and then maybe next week we can see them perform this dive comp to the expectations of what we're wanting to see out of it. You know what I think they should do? I think they need to go give a shout out to Natter. Go check him out. Each division winner at the end of this league will receive free two-hour coaching sessions. From him, Nata provides great educational content for Overwatch, including community VOD reviews and live coaching. So Rebellion can take the review of this match, go over to Nata, try to get some tips, try to get some coaching to see what they could have done, and try to change it up a little bit better. Maybe they have some comms recorded, maybe they can review that comms, but you know, you can go check Nata out. His Twitch is www.twitch.tv slash natter.ow, that's N-A-T-T-E-R-O-W, and he can be found in the Rose Cup Discord in the partner section. So which team does he coach for? Or what What exactly, what kind of coaching does he provide? He provides VOD community reviews. You go over, you send him your video on demand, your recorded match, and he goes over and he tells you, look, this is where you think you can go wrong. This is where you guys went wrong. This is what you can do better. This is what you should try. He also provides live coaching, which means he will watch your scrims and coach you live as you're going through them. The question is, how badly do they need it? Look at this forward aggressiveness from Dark Allegiance. They know they only have to win. You know, the win condition is holding, uh, is being aggressive into this point. But the Rebellion is running counter dive. What? Let's just They're see, doing though. their best here. 
let us just see because right now it's just very uncoordinated between both sides. You're just seeing just Fuse just getting all these picks onto them, but then Fivix is just sniping it up and then just you seeing Roadhog just pushing the payload up further and further. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 5X is getting those kills. He's getting those points. He's uncontested completely because, I mean, Snee and Ozymandias and the team basically are... What are they running? They're just having fun here at this point, toying with the enemy team. But look at how far the payload has already moved in two minutes and 40 seconds left in this payload. They only have to go, you know, another 20 meters to get to this point, but no one's contesting it. I mean, they're not running a bunker comp to sit on this payload. They're running counter dive for some reason and doing a really hard time of holding this. Dr. Ram is going to be able to pick up two and Tash is going to get a kill on the Zed, but again, Look at how close this payload is. They don't have to go very far. Right, and then they have that obligation to just sit there and that they want to go just a Rissa Hog just to be sure they can clean it up. They can get all that upfront damage, but now they're just wasting the time because it's just, all right, now they're supplying the team with plenty of ultimates for the team to reuse, going in and actually just immediately stopping any kind of pressure that the team wants to put out. So the question is, is Dark Allegiance toying with them? Because... I, I'm not really sure what this comp is trying to object. You're playing this, uh, you're playing this combination of tanks, two off tanks, not really being able to get much usage out of it. But Cretan is going to take down five, and Ozymandias does get a pulse bomb. So now it just looks like they're trying to out, they're trying to kill them with individual skill and just come in and roll stop. They are finally here on the comp. We're going to be see a dragon come down from. Dr. Ram, it's gonna get anyone. It is push a couple people off the point, but Snee is able to take down two key players here on the point. Joe Meister's got himself close to a coalescence here, but not yet, as Fuse is gonna use that whole hog. Pick off tears, and they are still pushing this point! No one can contest him! They can finally take him down with the help of 5X. But again, we are on the honeypot. We are there at the victory box. One minute left. All we're going to see is a couple swaps, a better tank line, and I think this is the end, Push. Two minutes and 57 seconds, and we're finally seeing a Doomfist ultimate coming out from Sneed. That is not a good sign coming out from your DPS player that's barely able to just pull that much ultimate. Well, you did tell me before that he's a fair one for us. Right, exactly. <laughs> oh, but he picks off two with it, so it doesn't matter that it took him two minutes and 50 seconds to build it up. He gets the value, takes down two, does pick up another punch onto Dr. Ram, and this point is stuck because Dr. Ram was the only one left on the point. Actually, it was Garrett Tar, but they do make it finally. 4-0 victory from Dark Allegiance here in the Rose Cup Season 3 Week 2 match. Woo. What I definitely saw was a team that wanted to do something that they really wanted to be sure that they can work on during their practices, but it didn't end up working in their favor. We really want to be sure, though, that whenever they're working on these kind of strategies, that they're not coming in with these new ideas during these new matches. They're only coming in with what they're practicing during the scrims. They really want to be sure that they're using that time for practice to keep moving forward with new ideas and then to establish what they've already done very well to make them a very heavy-hitting team. Absolutely right, Hidden, and maybe we'll see them again on another stream in another game, and maybe we'll see them improve, and you know what? Well, that's going to be it for us at the Rose League Rose Cup Season 3, Week 2. You just watched Dark Allegiance and Rebellion go at 4-0 victorious, and I, of course, want to thank everyone for being here. Thank you, Hidden Pants, for being my co-caster. Sora is in the back being the producer. He produced quite well. If you liked his camera work, make sure to give him a thumbs up and a shout out there in Twitch chat as well as in the Rose Cup Discord. Of course, thank you all Twitch viewers for watching. And of course, we got to give a shout out quickly again to Natter. He's throwing in some free coaching for the division winners. So thanks everyone and check him out. We'll see you on the next episode of Rose Cup Season 3. Bye. Great time.
Cause I'm 